Uh, today, faculty council came out with a recommendation to President Parks. Uh, that recommendation said four things, if I can remember them. One, that these were abnormal times, that students should be concerned, uh, that some sort of avenue should be open for that concern, and that faculty members should be aware of that, and that students should be able to ask for the avenue. Secondly, um, was a statement that faculty members should be considerate and responsive to students' wishes in this area. Thirdly, that any agreement reached should be put out on paper, to be kept by the student, by the faculty member, and by his advisor. And fourth, that there were certain instances in which it would be impossible for faculty members to let students take out, well, discard classes for the rest of the quarter. A couple of people I know have already spent the day talking to instructors, and several people I know have succeeded in getting themselves out of classes for the rest of this quarter. What this whole area talks about, or what it means, is that those people that you know, feel this is the correct avenue for them should be sometime tomorrow talking to their instructors and trying to get out of classes for the rest of the quarter by asking for a grade, um, or if possible, often to take an incomplete, which could be made up before the quarter is over. During the rest of this week, there are a lot of activities planned which, you know, allow for participation if possible, or if you want it. That means for the first time this year, we have major factions of this campus as, as factions co forming coalitions and working together. It means the anti-war students, the moratorium group, which has always been there, the last week has been combined with the government of the student body, which has been there sometimes, and now is combined with the Visha Central Committee and the Greek Action Committee. There's at least a, a four groups there forming a coalition, which means at this time that you know, I think we have to be as strong as we've been all year long. Faculty is coming along a little bit, and we can expect more from them, I think. Starting on, on Wednesday, as many of you may know, um, several of us, at least three of us, will be going to court for resisting arrest charges, a preliminary hearing. Uh, this afternoon, we attained counsel in Des Moines, uh, Mr. Dan Johnson, who many of us feel happens to be the best civil liberties lawyer in the Midwest, will be taking up at least three of us at this stage. We've been playing with, with different thoughts about what people could do to support us, um, and we still have a lot of mixed thoughts on that. Um, Mr. Johnson thinks anything that is designed as a support movement could very possibly just simply get us in trouble with the district court that uh, they'd respond adversely to any sort of pressure. Also, we're told that demonstrations outside of courtrooms and trials are going on are contempt of court charges. Um, he wasn't sure that you know the district court knew that, but, <laughs> but he knew it. Um, hopefully, there will be some sort of support activity on Wednesday. Um, you know, I'm not sure you know where it should be yet. Um, on Wednesday afternoon at one o'clock, Rossi does its traditional weekly march again. Uh, that offers a prospect of, of raising, you know, at least the question of why we allowed ourselves to be arrested. Um, I would think by tomorrow night at the Visha rally thing there will be some sort of announcement made as to what you know, the group of the 24 of us would like people to do in support of us. Um, that will more or less take care of Wednesday's, Wednesday's events. You know, the summer, you know, is when we get, you know, we go home and make the money so we can come back here. Um, summer for a lot of people, at least for me normally, has been a real bore. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to go home and conduct anti-war activities over the summer. And at least for me, that would make my summer more worthwhile. On Friday, the prospect is set for, for some sort of all-night concert type thing, again on Central Campus, just simply to, for an entertainment event. Saturday is Governor's Day, when lots who will be marching for the governor. I know he won't. I think one of the prospects we have between now and Saturday is, is requesting somehow, without coercing 
President Parks into, into calling off Governor's Day. Um, I say without coercion, I say without coercion because I think it's important that coercion not become a part of what we've been doing. I think at all times so far in this last week, we've been nonviolent. I think there have been times when we have been coercive. I think it's important that you know we purify the acts we're doing and we eliminate those aspects that have been coercive. I think we should just sell the point of what, what Ronsi is going to mean on that given day, and we have to be able to communicate to the governor of Iowa on that given day. You know, the governor of Iowa is the individual that, you know, can, if he so chooses, send a National Guard to Iowa State University or to the University of Iowa or anywhere else in the state. The governor of Iowa has control in large part, you know, the police power in the state. I think it's important that we communicate to him that police power isn't necessary, but at the same time we communicate to him, you know, that there are well, if he decides to show up, that there are things which we object about this university and which things about this university which should be changed. There originally was scheduled at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning a ROTC drill on Central Campus in preparation for Governor's Day. The word out now is that that drill has been canceled. And that drill is set for some unspecified time. Um, we'll try to find out what it is, and if we do, we'll inform people. Tomorrow morning, also at 6 o'clock, um, there is a busload of probably 30 or 40 people from Story County, going, including Greg Dieter, going down to Des Moines, Iowa to take their Armed Forces entrance examinations. Uh, just a straight physical. There are people that have expressed an interest at being there at 6 o'clock in the morning to greet those people, um, to explain, you know, as much as you can in the time that's allowed what the draft is about, um, maybe do some leafleting, but do a lot of talking. Um, and just sort of decide what else we can do at that time in relationship with the draft. Six o'clock is real early. Eight o'clock's been real early for anybody who's been getting up at eight o'clock. Um, and once again, you know, I'd, I'd like to just say, you know, I'd appreciate it, you know, I think it's important that people be there. Um, Seems like everything that's mentioned is followed by that, that you know that line that it's important that people be there. Um, that's, you know the absolute truth. Um, you know at six o'clock tomorrow morning at the bus station in the King's parking lot. Um, the more people there, the better it looks. It's pretty much that simple. Um, one thing. You know, you sort of have, um, you know, if you're handling things the way that we've been handling things, is that, you know, things are going to be, at all times, I think, sincere, but at the same time, solemn. Meaning, you know, there aren't, um, well, I'm sure there are people here, you know, that could stand up and, and give a course in fiery oratory and hopefully, you know, build somebody's. That's the pitch, you know, I think uh, hope will continue to be used. It's the pitch that I hope people will continue to respond to since they have in October. You know, so the pitch is it's important to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning.